I know what you guys are thinking. She has not been uploading onto YouTube because her OnlyFans is all she cares about now, and so she's gone forever. It's been forever. I mean, the OnlyFans is going well, but um, I wanted to make a video just to kind of explain what's been going on. I don't know if I need to get close to my mic. It's been forever. My room, look behind me, it's so dirty. I don't care. To explain what's been going on um, overall in the last like six months, I'm just gonna sit here. I'm not gonna add any cool effects. There probably won't be any mid rolls because it's not, it's kind of ominous and I don't want to add ads to this video. So don't expect, you know, halfway through, right when I'm about to get to the punch that the ad is gonna go pop because I'm just not gonna put mid rolls. Um, so, uh, where have I been the last six months? The last video you would have seen me make on this channel was um, my packing, <laughs> what a way to go out, packing Cristiano Ronaldo, team of the season, which was really cool. I'm so sorry if this air is going to be loud. It probably is. I meant for it to stay off, but whatever. We'll figure it out. Um, packed Cristiano Ronaldo, team of the season. How, mo how long ago was that? I want to check and see how long ago I even did that. Hello, Fangs. Fangs, 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 Fangs. I did post on Fangs says after this, I feel like, but... This was two years ago? No, that can't even be the case. No, five months ago. The date was May 24th. Um, that's the last time that I posted anything, and not too long after that, um, my grandmother passed away, so... That was hard. Uh, that was like a thing that happened. And I just, so in February, I had lost a cousin to COVID. He was like an older cousin. He was eight years older than me, I think. And, but I grew up with him and I always looked up to him and I was like, oh, Stevie, I just loved like everything he did. And we visited him a lot. He lived in Lufkin. And so that was like a hard thing for the year. And I was like, man, 2021's a rough year. But then, um, then in May, I lost my grandmother, and I was I was very upset then. Um, I went away for a week to go be with my family and uh, to, you know, mourn my grandmother. And I had, she, if you'd watched my, like, back in the day when I did my Draw My Life or whatever, she had been the one that had helped take care of me a lot of times whenever my mom really couldn't when I was a kid. And so, like, I loved her. We were born on the same day, November 3rd. It's coming up, like, next week. I'm kind of dreading it. Um, but we were born on the same day, and so this will be the first year that we don't celebrate and call each other and tell each other happy birthday, which is going to be hard enough as it was. And so I just, after I left to go to my grandma's house, um, I came home and I was like, I just, there's something about YouTube, I was still streaming. I streamed all summer on Facebook. I just stopped actually streaming on Facebook. I don't know if I'm going to continue or what I'm going to do. I don't really know what the future ever holds, <laughs> but um, I was like, I'm gonna take a break. I need like a month off because the comments on YouTube were just horrendous. And like everybody was just, it was just getting to me. And I, I was already sad and I didn't need to be beat up anymore. So I took one month off and then one month led to two months and two months led to three months. And I think by like August, I was like, maybe I just don't wanna upload on YouTube at all again anymore. And I mean, I'm going back and forth thinking of like what I should, do with the, that this main channel if I wanted to do FIFA anymore I'm kind of not as into it, especially FIFA 22 <laughs> just not as into it so um it was like a good break and I needed it for the summer and leading up to in August on my dad's like to my, leading up to my dad's birthday um I was actually gonna start uploading September 1st that was like I was gonna figure out like I was gonna try to do probably real life stuff and I don't know I, I was I had in my mind all these different plans of things I was gonna do um but on September not on September, in October, <laughs> my brain, my brain doesn't work anymore. Um, on August the 19th, my dad came over to my house and he had been complaining of like being like lightheaded, which we didn't know about until literally two weeks before because he just didn't want us to worry, which um, stinks, but he had been lightheaded. He, had, he said he wanted to come to my house and see the boys and it was like a Monday or something. Was it a Monday? No like a Thursday I don't know and he was like I want to come see the boys and I was like okay fine like you don't usually come in the middle of the week he usually comes Sundays and Mondays but I was like sure come see him and I remember sitting on the front porch with him and he just seemed weird 
And, well, f- at first, I was picking weeds, and he was smoking cigarettes, because he loved to smoke cigarettes, which is terrible for you. Um, but he was telling me about, you know, how he felt lightheaded, and he was like, ooh, I'm starting to feel, like, tightness in my chest. And I was like, Dad, like, that's not okay. That yeah, That's not, you need to sit down. And so I, like, had him sit down, and he was just kind of sitting there, like, staring off into the abyss. I don't even know. And I was like, there's something wrong. And I was like, we need to go to the emergency room. He's like, just give me a minute. And so we gave him like five minutes and he ended up, I mean, he started looking better and he ended up looking fine. He was like, I think I'm fine. Um, and I was like, no, you're not. And I told him I wanted to drive him home or drive him to a hospital. And he was very stubborn and he was like, no, I'm fine. Just track me on your phone. Cause we have that find my iPhone. Not even that, like the location thing. So we fought and fought over it and he, he left and I wish I didn't let him leave, but, um, on the way, like halfway, I guess on his way home, I was tracking him and he stopped and I was like, what's going on? And all he was able to say was like, I'm going to try to make it to the hospital. And he told that to me and, um, to Anita who he is with. And so he was like, yeah, I'm going to try to make it to the hospital. And I was like, um, okay. Like we need to track him. So I'm like, instantly I'm running I just ran I ran out of the door got in the car started tracking him called 911 was like you guys need to get to my dad he's at this location um I'm gonna try to get there as fast as possible I ended up being the first one to get there he had pulled over on like a bridge and when I got to him he was alive he was fine but he was just kind of like hunched over and I was like are you okay like and he just kind of looked at me and smiled a little bit and I was like you know he was trying to make me feel better you could tell and I'm just like talking to people and Anita on the line like hey this is where he is all this stuff and getting him there and it was it was like one of the scariest moments of my life I guess um and so he was able to pull over we got the ambulance there they gave him some kind of nitrous and put it under his tongue and then um ends up turns out he had had a heart attack I guess two heart attacks but he said at one point that like he felt like his brain was was like on fire like the worst pain he'd ever felt that's why he pulled over because it felt like something shot to his head and they told him, oh, that's probably, like, the blood pressure or whatever. And so um, he ended up having to get... He had some clogged arteries. Arteries. I can't talk. And he had to get a stent put in. And then, like, this really... One of the top cardiologists in our area, like, went through and cleaned it out. And, like, the next day, my dad felt better than he had felt in, like, two years. He felt amazing. And so we're like, oh, my God. This is, like... This is it. Um, he's going to feel better. He wanted to stop smoking. He usually smokes, like, two packs a day. And... Um, he was, we wanted him to stop cold turkey, but obviously when you're addicted to something, you don't. So he was, he had a patch and he would smoke a couple of cigarettes like here and there, but it was not, it was like seven or eight and not, you know, I don't even know how many is in two packs, but not that. And so, um, we were so happy. His birthday was on the 23rd and got to celebrate it. Me, him, and, um, and my son Rook got to celebrate it with him. We ate at this place called Papa Do's and... It was a lot of fun and I liked it, but you could tell like he was still, you know, he's recovering from a surgery, a heart surgery. So he's recovering and we continued to like talk on the phone and keep up and he was super excited. It was like a second, you know, gift at life. He was trying to start eating better and start, you know, stop smoking and all this stuff. Cause I mean, even though he's tall and skinny, you can have what I found out I have, which is like hereditary cholesterol issues. And so he was on some medicine. He had to take like a blood thinner um, because when you have a stint, like apparently you can get a clot. And so he was on that and he was taking all this stuff every day. And we thought, okay, like we get like another 10 to 20 years. That's what the guy said. If you would stop smoking, you could have another 10 to 20 years. And we're like, this is amazing. Like, I'm so happy that it didn't turn out the other way and that he didn't die and something didn't happen in the car. Um, and so... I didn't, I was just too stressed out at that point. I didn't, um, I hadn't done anything since I didn't like work out or do anything. I just tried to keep up with my dad as much as possible. Um, I had him like coming over and, uh, we would, you know, try to spend time with him. He went back to work like five days after this happened, by the way, which was hard. I was like, you can't go back to work, but he's one of those people that they're going to work until they die. Like they're gonna, they're just, that's, he can't sit still. And so we couldn't get him to not, even his work was like, why are you here so early? But um so everything seemed fine he was working really hard to get my my brother who um for like 15 years was a drug addict has been sober for the last three years and so my dad was trying to get him to move down here he had bought this like trailer for him to stay in and he was fixing it up and the friday september i have to look because i don't even know 17th or something 
um, Friday, yeah, it's Friday, September 17th. Uh, he told me, he's like, hey, um, your brother's here to see the trailer and to get, my dad bought him a new car to get a, the car and he's going to go back up and in two weeks he's going to come back and live here and I'm going to fix, the trailer's going to be done by then. And so I was like, man, you don't need to be working on that trailer, but it wasn't a lot. He wasn't doing like crazy hard labor. And so he came over and um, luckily I have like cameras I, so I can see like what we talked about because we were in the front yard and he saw my boys and you know, he seemed completely normal, completely fine. Like healthy as could be I would never he said that morning he kind of had a headache but I didn't really like he said it was like gone and then it went away so I'm just thinking yeah he's still you know he's still got things things going on and he's recovering um and then um he actually we didn't talk that weekend for some reason we usually didn't go more than like two days without talking and he did call me Monday morning and I was busy taking the boys to school I believe or was it Tuesday morning? Tuesday morning. I had just ordered the new iPhone and he called me Tuesday morning and I couldn't answer. And he said, Hey hun, um, how's it going? Uh, what were we doing? We do we go to the little gym? Yeah. We finally went to the little gym. Anyway, he was like, how's it going? Did you change something on the phone bill? And I was like, yeah, um, I ordered the new iPhone 13. So, um, don't worry about it. I'll pay for it or whatever. I'll make the extra payment. And he was like, okay, cool. And put a thumbs up. And that's the last interaction I ever had with my dad because the next day um, I was live streaming. I'd actually, that's the day the boys went to school. I had woken up and taken the boys to school. They got there at nine. I got home. Uh, well, actually I ate first, I think. Why, someone has called me doing this. I ate first. Um, we went to this place that we like called Westside Cafe. And then I got home and I started streaming. And about 45 minutes into streaming, um, Anita calls me and I'm like, why is she calling? Like she never calls me and I didn't think anything of it at first, but my Will sister was possibly trying to buy a car from like her dealership. So I was like, oh, maybe she's calling about that. And so I just didn't answer it. And then the second time she called, I don't know why, but it was like an instant trigger. It triggered me and I was like, I need to answer this. So I muted myself on stream because I thought, okay, it's gonna end up being about the car, but I didn't know. And of course, um, I'm getting this call. Let me see if I can answer this. It ended up being an important call. So thank God I answered it. Um, so anyway, uh, Anita called me and I answered and she was like crying and I was like, oh no, God, like instantly I knew something was wrong. And so I got on the phone with a police officer and the police officer was talking to me and he was like, um, your dad was in a car accident. And I was like, what? And, you know, I'm like, asking him like, how? And he was like, well, he went off the road and he hit a pillar and his car um, caught on fire. And I'm like, thinking, what, what? And I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm like, wait, what? And he was like, um, they pulled him out. No, they pulled him out of the car. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Cause at that point I'm like, what is happening? I'm like, okay, he's fine. So like, where do I need to go? So the first thing I said, where do I need to come? And he was like, well, no, they tried to do CPR. And I'm like, at that point I'm like, that's like kind of when it hit me. And I'm like, they tried to do CPR. And he's like, they tried to do CPR. And, um, you know, some, someone pulled out of the car, got him away from the fire, and a a person tried to do CPR. And then when the ambulance got there, they tried to do CPR. And um, after like 30 minutes, they they couldn't resuscitate him. And I was like, you know, I I don't know if you ever expect that call in your life, but I wasn't ready for it, I guess. Um, and so I just said, well, no, no, that can't be. Are you sure? I remember saying, are you sure that that is the case? And they were like, yes. Um, and I was like, can I come see him then? Can I, I, I need to be there with him. I need, you know, I need to see my dad. And they're like, you don't, you can't, he's already in the ambulance. Um, you can't come see him. He's going to be taken to this like medical examiner place. And I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to come see him. And they're just, they, they won't let you, which is kind of, I mean, I guess it's probably for the better. Cause I have no idea what his shape would have looked like then. Like, because he hit, so what ended up happening was, um, to cut like a long story short, because we've had an autopsy and everything, and what we think has happened, he had a brain aneurysm. We thought it was going to be a heart attack, but he ended up having a brain aneurysm, aneurysm caused by like a stroke from like high blood pressure and smoking. And um, so he just passed out and he didn't hit the brakes. He just kind of, you know, the car drifted the way that it would drift if no one was driving it. And he went into a bridge pillar thankfully a bridge pillar not they, I mean, there was oncoming there's highway like traffic right here so it was just him he didn't run into any other cars um and the car did catch fire really quickly which is kind of crazy he was going 50 miles an hour 
airbags did deploy. Um, the person, I got to talk to the people about it and they said when they pulled him out, I'm very like thankful, but when they pulled him out, they had three guys that had pulled over, pulled him out of the car before it completely went up in flames. Um, and a woman actually gave him compressions um, and she said he had no pulse even when she pulled him out of the car. So in my mind, I imagine he was, you know, already gone whenever they started that, but they, they tried, at least they tried, which is, you know, not something that someone has to do. Um, and they just couldn't revive him. And so that ensued to like, just that whole day to me is like a blur. I just like came down and told my husband and we like cried. And, um, at that point you don't like really know what goes into it afterwards, but like you have to they're saying, like, if you want to see his body, you know, then you have to find a funeral home. And if you're at a funeral home, you got to start planning all this. And I'm just sitting here thinking, like, my dad just died. Like, he's dead. And I don't even know how to, like, take this all in. But I need to do all these things so that I can see him if he's, you know, able to be seen. We didn't even know if he's able to be seen yet. And so um, spent that whole day doing that. Had all these people. He was a donor. So had all these people calling, asking crazy questions, like, they take his eyes and skin parts of his skin and i'm like at this point i don't want i just want to see my dad i don't want anyone to touch him i just want to see him um and so that all ensued and it continued so i lost my dad i mean i'm not going to tell you every single splitting detail but we had the celebration of life for him it was actually beautiful he had so many my dad i'm sure you've seen him in videos and if you know anything about him you'll know that he was just like he loved living and that's what kills me the most. I think what kills me the most is that he was so happy that he was, he knew something, what was wrong with him. And it was kind of fixed, at least at that time. And that he loved living so much. And he loved like my boys. He loved me so much. Oh my God. He was like my biggest fan. I have so many pictures of him in all my outfits and just anything I did, he was okay with. He did not care. He was just there supporting me. I said this in his, like, I, I gave a speech in his celebration of life, which... I had to do. People said, I can't believe, like, that sounds like it would be so hard, but no, like, for that man, that person in my life, I had to do it. And, um, he, he just lit up a room and that you could tell with a celebration life with how many people showed up. There was, he's 62 years old and there was, you know, over a hundred people in there, maybe 150. And it just showed me how much people loved and cared about my dad. But it killed me. Like, it still killed... I mean, obviously, it's always going to kill me. I don't know. I'm in, like, all these... I've been trying to listen to audiobooks about grief and stuff like that. But I think the thing that bothered me the most is that he was, like, so in love with my boys, my Rook and Brody, and... Um, I just... I hate that they don't... That they're, that they're not going to get to know what an amazing person that was um sorry that like that's like the part that like kills me the most i mean i should be sad for myself but i'm more sad for my boys um that they won't i mean my youngest not my youngest but oldest rook always was with my dad they hung out all the time they had a really good bond and so having to tell him was probably one of the hardest things i've ever done in my life and he gets it he's three and a half he gets it and you know we we're gonna try our hardest to keep him alive in our hearts um we have his like urn his ashes already so we have him up in the middle because he liked to sleep in the living room somehow my aunts brought his, his mom my oma so we have her too so they're together she came to the funeral um and yeah that's just it's just hard it's really hard but we have like picture frames where they can see him all the time we have pictures in their rooms of him I'm gonna do this thing where I get like these stamps because he always wrote cards and signatures, so I have his signatures. And so, of course, well, I want to get a tattoo of like his where he used to say "Love you, Dad" on my arm and his cards, and then also like "Happy Birthday, Rook" or "Merry Christmas, Rook," and like have them always have like a gift from him in the holidays or something. But my 2021 has been really hard, and it's been a little over a month since that happened, and I have been in this roller coaster. I had so much go on afterwards, like, legal things. You go through this probate legal stuff that happens afterwards, and I had all these trips already planned and all these things coming, and things just keep coming up that remind me. Like, last weekend, we went to um, this soiree, Halloween soiree thing, and that, that night, that night and this weekend, he had told me that he would watch the boys 
because we were going to be, you know, away and busy and um, he was going to have help with it. It's not like it was just going to be him. And I was like, okay. And so when I come home last Saturday night and, you know, it's my friend's mom helping me because she's amazing. Watch them and not my dad. Um, I don't know. Things like that trigger me big time. And I think my birthday is really going to trigger me on the third because uh, I've seen him every birthday. Even if it's like a couple days after I've had him every birthday my whole life. And he'll be here, I guess. He'll be down there in, in his little urn. Um, it's not, it's actually pretty big. And, but it won't be him, you know, and he won't, I won't have my card that he always, he always picked the coinest cards. I won't have that. And I won't have him calling me and it's just is starting to sink in now, I guess. But that's made it really, this whole 2021 has made it really hard to find the, no, I guess really the want to want to be beat up, beat down, I guess. I don't know. Cause I feel like when you upload on YouTube, there's so much negativity that um it's I'm already going through a lot and I don't know if I want to add on to that you know it's everything's already been so hard and it just keeps getting harder apparently I guess I've gone through po quite possibly one of the worst things that will happen in my life but I don't know but I decided to upload this just to to update y'all and because mostly I feel like my dad would want me to upload he loved that I was a YouTuber. He loved all the parts of that. He loved every bit. You've seen it all over social media. Every single stream I ever did, he would like share it. And that's another hard part, like not having him on my Facebook. Literally, he liked every single post, shared every single post. And now I don't, it's like I lost my biggest fan. And yeah, so I feel like he would, would want me to upload. I don't know. I mean, I to, to keep up with what I was doing. To try to give it as much as I can, and so that's what I want to do. I don't know if I want to do FIFA. I don't know if I want to do vlogs. I don't know what I want to do, but I want to try to start getting it together at least towards the end of this year, and see how everything turns out. Um, and I don't want y'all to think I just left y'all forever. I may try to start streaming on Twitch or even here. I don't know. I'll see how things work out. But um, if you're still around, you're still watching this. Thanks for still supporting my channel. And yeah, I hope. You guys have an awesome day. I'm sure I just totally killed it. Buzz killed it. Sorry. And yeah, hopefully we'll get back to uploading because it made me happy at one point. Uploading made me happy at one point and I'm hoping it can again, but we just need to drop the, the negative Nancys and keep the positive people, please. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this and um, I hope to see you soon. I'll keep y'all updated. Bye, everybody. <laughs>